الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. All praise is due to Allah alone. May peace and blessings be upon our Messenger Muhammad and upon his family and his companions. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Brothers and sisters, welcome to another episode of the basics of a Muslim's belief. Having talked about the moment of death and having talked about the events of the grave from the hadith of Al-Bara ibn Azib radiyallahu ta'ala anhu wa ardah, we now come to talk about some of the issues that we need to be aware of during the trial in the grave and the punishment in the grave and some of the things that relate to that in terms of our belief that are important to highlight and some misconceptions about the punishment of the grave. Firstly, is the punishment of the grave, is it something for our ummah or for every ummah? The correct opinion is that it is for every ummah, not just the ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, but that this is something that will happen and these events that were described will happen to every ummah. And of course, those of them who believed in the Prophet of their time, as Allah Azza wa Jal commanded them to do, and the previous Prophets that preceded the Prophet of their time, will be given the reward of the believer. And as for those who did not, they will be given the reward of the disbeliever, and so on and so forth. Whether they are from the Ummah of the Da'wah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, or from the Ummah of the Da'wah of any of the other Prophets Alayhim Wasallam. There will be some who will be exempt from the questioning. There will be some who will be exempt from the questioning, who will not be questioned in their graves. From them are the prophets. The prophets will not be questioned in their graves. And this is for two reasons. Firstly, we're going to hear in a moment that the martyr will not be questioned. And if the martyr will not be questioned, then the prophet is more deserving of not being questioned. The second reason that the Prophets will not be questioned in their grave is because the question in the grave is to ask you about the Prophets and whether or not you recognize them and whether or not you followed their message and accepted the religion that they commanded you to follow. And so the Prophet does not need to be asked about whether or not he believed in himself. Salawatullahi wa salamuhu alayhi. From those who will not be questioned in the grave are the martyrs. A man said to the Prophet wasallam, why is it that the believers will be tried in their grave except for the martyrs? The Prophet wasallam replied, the shining of swords over his head is enough of a test. And this is in Sunan al-Nasai, and it's an authentic hadith of the Prophet wasallam. The shining of the swords above his head is enough of a test. The fact that somebody was fighting in one of those battles of the battles of Islam, and they stayed firm like the people who fought in the battle of Badr with the swords above their heads when they thought they were going to die and they stayed firm for Islam, that is enough of a test. They don't need to be asked after that if they believe in Allah Azza wa Jal and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. From those who will not be questioned in the grave are the soldier who dies guarding the Muslim territory, the border guard who guards the Muslim territory and dies in a state where he is guarding the land of the Muslims. In the hadith of Salman radiallahu an, it is mentioned that guarding the Muslim territory for a day and a night is better than fasting and praying for a month. And if he dies, his deeds that he used to do will continue and he is saved from the trial. And this is in Sahih Muslim, he is saved from the trial of the grave. And those who are not required to follow the Sharia, such as the young and the insane. This is because the trial of the grave is a part of taklif. It's a part of the fact of your requirement to follow Islam. And so if you were died when you were not required to follow Islam, then 
Likewise, you will not be required to answer questions about your following of Islam, like the young person who dies before puberty or the person who is insane and dies having never had a period in their life where they were practicing Islam because of their insanity. Then this person can't be asked about their practicing of Islam during their life and Allah Azza wa Jal knows best. The next issue that is important to deal with is the issue of the disbeliever in the grave. The majority of the scholars of Islam, and this is the correct opinion, they say that the disbelievers are tried in their graves as well. And the correct wording of the hadith of the Prophet wasallam is the kafir and the munafiq. So both the kafir and the munafiq will both be tried in their graves as the hadith of the Prophet wasallam suggests. As for the kafir, we know that this is mentioned in the hadith of Al-Bara, the disbeliever, who will say, I don't know. But the difference of opinion was over the munafiq, who professes Islam on the outside, but keeps disbelief in the inside. And the correct opinion is that the munafiq will also be tried because of the wording of the hadith of the Prophet Wasallam, the kafir and the munafiq. And this is the most authentic wording of the hadith and Allah Azza wa Jal knows best. We've already discussed in the talk about the angels that Munkar and Nakir, either descriptions or names or both of the angels, but we know from those names or descriptions, and Allah knows best whether they are names or descriptions, we know that they are severe and they are harsh and they are scary and frightening. And that's what those names suggest or those descriptions suggest. In terms of the punishment of the grave, the punishment of the grave, brothers and sisters, is mentioned in the Qur'an. And a group of deviant people came and said that there is no punishment of the grave mentioned in the Qur'an. And they denied the punishment of the grave mentioned in the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. They were those people who they made their intellect superior to the Qur'an and the Sunnah. They made their intellect superior to the Qur'an and the Sunnah of the Prophet And this is something that the Muslim must never do. They came and they put their intellect and they said, we can't see it, so it doesn't exist. We say to them, what do you say about Allah when you can't see Allah? And what do you say about the angels when you can't see the angels? And one after the other after the other. And you find these people have very twisted beliefs about Allah and about the angels as well because they are people who use their intellect ahead of the Qur'an and the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. But in reality, the punishment of the grave is mentioned in the Qur'an, in some of the ayat that we've already heard. In Surah Ghafir, which is Surah number 40, ayah number 45 to 46, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, so Allah protected him from the evils they plotted, and the people of Fir'aun were enveloped by the worst of punishment, the fire, they are exposed to it morning and evening. And on the day when the hour appears, it will be said, make the people of Fir'aun enter the severest punishment. Anyone who reads these two ayat, 45 and 46, from Surah Ghafir, which is the 40th Surah of the Quran, you will see that Allah Azza wa Jal talks about two punishments of Fir'aun and his people a punishment on the day of judgment and a punishment before the day of judgment. Allah says the fire, they are exposed to it morning and evening. And then on the day when they will be brought to Allah Azza wa Jal, when the hour appears, it will be said the people of Fir'aun enter the severest of punishment. So you can see that the ayah is clearly talking about two punishments. One that happens on the day of judgment and one that happens before and both involve burning in the hellfire. The one that happens before is the punishment in the grave. And Allah Azza wa Jal says in the ayah that we heard in Surah Al-An'am, ayah number 93. And if you could see when the wrongdoers were in the overwhelming pangs of death, when the angels extend their hands saying, discharge your souls today, you will be awarded the punishment of extreme humiliation for what you used to say against Allah other than the truth and that you were towards his verses being arrogant. The angels say today, today, immediately. So this punishment that happens to them 
it happens immediately. And the striking of the faces and the backs happens immediately. Today, you will be given the punishment of extreme humiliation. Not on the day of judgment, because they're not dying on the day of judgment. And it's not correct for us to say today when the day of judgment hasn't happened. Rather, the day of judgment is a day and today is another day. And the angels, when they take that soul of that dead person, they say, today you will be rewarded the punishment of extreme humiliation. And so this shows us that this punishment is a punishment that happens before the day of judgment. And in Surah Al-Anfal, ayah number 50, Allah Azza wa Jal says, but if you could see when the angels take the souls of those who disbelieved, striking their faces and their backs and saying taste the punishment of the burning fire the same thing applies i'm going to continue this discussion insha'Allah ta'ala after the break until then assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh <laughs> upon him the floods swept the entire earth sparing only those who believed today floods of shirk floods of innovation and floods of desires and lust are sweeping the whole earth Al-Imam Malik ibn Anas of Medina said that the Sunnah is the Ark of Nuh. Whoever boards it is saved and whoever refuses is drowned and is doomed forever. Join me in Al-Arba'een Al-Nawawiyyah, the 40 hadith compiled by Al-Imam Al-Nawawi. Join Asim Al-Hakim in Al-Arba'een Al-Nawawiyyah tomorrow at 11 p.m. and repeat telecast at 12.30 p.m. Saudi Arabia on Peace TV. Pearls of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Jarir bin Abdullah, may Allah be pleased with him, narrated that Allah's Messenger May peace be upon him said, Allah will not be merciful to those who are not merciful to mankind. Sahih Al-Bukhari, Volume 9, Book of Tawheed, Hadith number 7376. Who was the first prophet? Was a prophet the first one to read and write? Did God speak to a prophet? A prophet in a prison. A prophet who commanded the birds, insects, and animals? Want to know more? Join us for Stories of the Prophet. Stories of the Prophets, next on Peace TV. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. That the punishment of the grave is mentioned in several ayat of the Quran. And we come to Surah Tawbah. The ninth surah of the Quran, ayah number 101. We will punish them twice. Then they will be brought back to a horrible torment. We will punish them twice. And then they will be brought back to a horrible torment. Where is the punishing of twice? Before they are brought back to the horrible torment, before they are resurrected for the horrible torment, where is the twice punishment? The twice punishment, one of them is in the grave. Allah Azza wa Jal punishes them in their lifetime and Allah Azza wa Jal punishes them in their grave and then they are resurrected and punished with a severe torment. And Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala says in Surah Taha which is the 20th surah of the Quran ayah number 124 and whoever turns away from my remembrance indeed he will have a life of hardship and we will gather him on the day of resurrection blind. A number of scholars of tafsir, they said the life of hardship will be in the punishment of the grave and is not necessarily in this dunya. 
And some of them said it is in the dunya and in the punishment of the grave. But that it is concealed in the dunya in many ways. But in reality that every disbeliever suffers that hardship in this dunya. But for certain it applies to the punishment of the grave. And the ayat that we heard from Surah Al-Waqi'ah at the end of Surah Al-Waqi'ah about the pleasure and the punishment. Again, a number of the scholars of tafsir, ayah number 83 to 96, a number of the scholars of tafsir, they said about this or these set of ayat that they refer to the punishment of the grave. And Allah Azza wa Jal knows best. But there's no doubt that it is mentioned in the Quran a number of times. We also need to talk about the punishment of the grave that is affirmed in the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Abu Ayyub radiallahu an narrated that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam went out when the sun had risen, when he heard a noise and he said, Jews being punished in their graves. And this is in Bukhari and Muslim. And Anas radiallahu an narrated that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, if it were not that you would not bury your dead, I would have asked Allah to let you hear some of the punishment of the grave. If it were not for the fact that you would not bury your dead, I would have asked Allah to let you hear something of the punishment of the grave. And this is in Sahih Muslim. And some of the scholars say that this means that if it were not for the fact that you would die yourself from the horror of hearing it, I would ask Allah to let you hear some of the punishment of the grave. So two opinions about what this phrase means, either that you would not bury your dead because you would not dare to go near to the graves out of the horrible sound of punishment or that you would be so horrified that you would die and yourselves be buried because of hearing that punishment. There are also some more misconceptions that we need to deal with with regard to the punishment of the grave. Does the punishment affect the soul or the body or does it affect both of them? Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah ta said, rather the punishment and the bliss happened to the soul and the body together by the agreement of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah. The soul experiences the bliss and the punishment independently just as it experiences it with the body. And the bliss and punishment happen to them both together just as they happen to the soul on its own. And we mentioned this when we talked about the soul, that the soul gets the larger portion of the blessing or the punishment in the grave. Because there are some things that only happen to the soul and some things that happen to the soul and the body. But in general, it happens to the soul and the body and there are some things that happen to the soul on its own. Does the punishment of the grave stop? There is no doubt that for a disbeliever, the punishment of the grave does not stop. As for the disobedient Muslim, then the punishment of the grave may stop for a number of reasons, including the dua of someone for them or because of a good deed that they have done that saves them from it for a time. What is some of the wisdom behind why we can't see the punishment of the grave? First of all, the hadith we've heard of the Prophet ﷺ, but also so that the sins of the dead person are concealed. Who would like it that when they die, if they are punished in their grave, may Allah save us and you from that, that their sins be spread to everybody and everybody knows that they're being punished in the grave. And from the benefits is that it would be a huge burden on a person's family. How would you sleep at night knowing that your mother or your father was being punished in their grave? And the people would speak ill of the person and their family and taunt them. You can imagine someone saying, oh, your son is punished in the grave. Your son is being punished in the grave. You weren't a good mother. You weren't a good father. You weren't a good son. And from the benefits and the wisdom is that we could die as a result of hearing or seeing the punishment because of its severity. And of course, the test of our Iman would not be so great. And that is what is most important for us here in this series of the basics of a Muslim's belief, that our test of our Iman would not be so great. The test of our Iman would not be so great because we would be able to see that punishment happening and it would not be such a test of our faith in the unseen and our test of our faith in Allah Azza wa Jalla. And I want to continue now by concluding this episode, looking at the causes of punishment and the causes of being saved. What are the causes for you to be punished? 
and what are the causes for you to be saved. As for the causes of punishment, the fundamental cause of punishment is disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I want you to focus upon something. You notice the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and all of the ayat that talk about this in the Quran, they mention two groups, the true believer and the complete disbeliever. What don't they mention? They don't mention the disobedient Muslim. And the ulama, the scholars of Islam, they say, the reason they don't mention the disobedient Muslim is so that you have fear. Am I going to be like the disbeliever or like the Muslim? And we know that there will be Muslims who are punished in their graves. The Prophet ﷺ mentioned this. And he mentioned the two that were punished in their grave. One for not protecting themselves from urine when they went to the toilet. Not keeping their clothes clean of urine. And one of them who used to tell lies. And so many lies that the lies would reach the horizon so the basic cause here or the basic principle here that we need to understand is that the disobedient muslim is between the two somewhere are they nearer to one or nearer to the other allah azza wa jal knows best we haven't been told to keep that fear and that feeling that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if we do not obey him there is a chance that we will be punished in the grave even if we say la ilaha illallah as is authentically mentioned in the sunnah of the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam so the main cause of punishment in the grave is disobedience to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and sin and of course the permanent punishment for those who have the ultimate sin of making a partner with Allah and disbelieving in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the punishment which is less than that for those who are Muslim but they have some sins and disobedience that Allah Azza wa Jal has decreed will result in the punishment of the grave. And the ahadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentions certain sins that will be the cause for the punishment in the grave specifically as opposed to just all of the general sins. First, spreading tales to cause enmity between people. Spreading tales to cause enmity. And in the hadith of the two people, one of them didn't protect themselves from urine, and the other one spread tales and lies in order to cause hatred between each other. Not keeping yourself clean from urine. Stealing from the war booty that is collected by the leader of the Muslims and it is not yet being distributed. I stealing from the wealth of the Muslim state. Letting the clothes fall below the ankles. The Prophet ﷺ said whatever is below the ankles is in the hellfire. And this is for men only. As for women, they are allowed a forearm's length below the ankle. But for men, letting their clothes fall below their ankle, whatever your justification for it is, is a reason to be punished in the grave. Telling a lie which reaches the horizon. And this is such a dangerous thing in our society, in our time, with the evil of Facebook and Twitter and all of these modern ways of communicating and email, that you can tell a lie and that lie can reach millions of people in a second. Before you had to work at it. Now, you tell a lie, you send it by email, it reaches a hundred people and they send it to a hundred and they send it to a hundred and they send it to a hundred before long, your lie has been seen by millions. Or you post it on Facebook or on Twitter and it's seen by thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions of people. This is a reason to be punished in the grave. Fornication and usury. And usury and interest is a major reason to be punished in the grave. As for the causes of being saved, then the cause of being saved from the punishment in the grave it has a general and a specific. The general is all good deeds. Every good deed that you do is a cause for you not to be punished in the grave. But there are some points that are mentioned in the authentic hadith. Being martyred for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal. And again, we emphasize that this means legitimately. And we don't testify martyrdom for anyone. We hear a lot these days of people saying this guy is shaheed and this woman is shaheed. Martyrdom, we don't testify it for certain for anyone. Because testifying martyrdom means testifying paradise. And we don't know their intention. 
But we say they're shaheed, insha'Allah. If they die in one of the ways that is mentioned as being martyrdom in the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with the conditions that apply to that. Dying from a disease of the stomach is a reason not to be punished in the grave. Those people who die from something relating to their stomach or their intestine, insha'Allah ta'ala, we hope that this will be a reason for them not to be punished in the grave. Reading Surah Tabarak, Surah Al-Mulk, every night before you go to sleep is authentically mentioned as a reason to prevent the punishment of the grave. May Allah Azza wa Jal make it easy for us all to do that and constantly seeking refuge. It's authentically reported from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that as soon as it was revealed to him about the punishment of the grave, from that day he did not stop seeking refuge from it in his prayer and in the other places that he would seek refuge from it. Sallallahu Alaihi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. In the next episode, insha'Allah ta'ala, we're going to continue looking at what happens for the resurrection when the people are resurrected from their graves. Until then, Assalamu Alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Allah, Allah, you are my Lord. I bow to you, Allah.